That's a big, big game, mate. Right? Okay, Gail, do you want to take away? Yeah. In Japanese. <laughs> Eddie, um, how have you found the short turnaround this week? Uh, no, we've had a really good preparation. Obviously, we had to get organised quickly. We'd, we'd done some prior work on Japan. Um, but the players have come in at a good break. They needed a break. They worked hard for three weeks. So they've come in refreshed. We had one day to get organised, one day to train, and now one day to recover. So we're set to go. So just two training sessions this week? Uh, two good training sessions, that's enough. Uh, players have got a good understanding of how we want to play. You know, we picked our best 23 for this week. It's involved some changes between guys starting and finishing, but uh, there's a good, really good feel in the camp. Should we go through some of those then? Let's do department by department, because there's quite a few, isn't there? In terms of the backs, um Debbie on his, what, this is his 21st birthday today, isn't it? Joe Thock and Singer. So how did he greet that news? Uh, he's pretty excited. Uh, yeah, he's quite a shy boy, but uh, increasingly over the time he's spent with the team, he's come out of himself and uh, yeah, there's something a little bit special about him, so we're looking forward to seeing him play. What's that little bit special about him? Uh, he's got power and he's got pace. How excited, you said he's excited, how excited are you seeing him up against this opposition? Yeah, look, you know, the Japanese wingers are very good wingers. Uh, you know, whether he plays against Lameki, who's a very good sevens player, got good feet, so he's going to have to be at his best. In terms of the half-back pairing, you've changed again. What are you, what are you looking for? Uh, your half-back pairing? Well, you know, George as the captain and, and Ten as the responsibility of... of organising the team, running the team around the field um, and George has been in good form albeit he's had uh, limited game time and then Danny brings a, a certain sparkle around the ruck. And up front, who, who's the one that's exciting you most in terms of what you might see from your pack this week? Well, I think it's a great opportunity for Charlie Yules. I think he's a guy again that we've had in the squad <clears throat> for maybe two or three years. Uh, he gets this opportunity to run the line out and play against, again, a, a very good team. Uh, Michael Leach is a very good line out forward, so he'll test, he'll test us. And how different is the pressure this week and the expectation this week compared to last week? Uh, well, it looks like it's a bigger game. <laughs> um, well, I think we always carry that expectation of wanting to play well. Um, so it's, it doesn't matter whether we're playing New Zealand, Japan, Mongolia, we want to play well. We want to make sure that the people who come to Twickenham, 82,000 come to Twickenham, enjoy the game. Um, so there's no more pressure, no less pressure than there was last week. George, how does your mindset change this week? Obviously you've had two weeks in you where you've had to start on the bench and it's a big shift, isn't it? Because you're captain, you're 50 cap and you get to start this week. Yeah, just I'm massively excited for it, to be honest. Um, even the last couple of weeks, even though... Like Eddie said, I've not had much game time. My involvement and hopefully contribution in the week has, has not been too dissimilar to this week. So, um, yeah, it's been a good couple of weeks in camp already. Um, and we're massively excited. We think it's another great opportunity this week for us to take a step forward as a team. Um, and we're looking to do that Saturday. And how's this week compared to others, just by having one day's full training? Has it been a bit strange? Is it you all kind of, you know, or did you like actually going home and having a little bit of a break? Oh no, it was not. Yeah, it was nice having a break. Obviously, we've been in camp two and a half, three weeks, but um, it's been good, really. You lose a day of of prep, obviously being at home, but you come in and you've got to be sharper, you, mentally especially. So, um, training was really good yesterday. Um, we've had plenty of walkthroughs, and the clarity and knowledge is good of what we want to do on Saturday. So, just keep building now. Sushi are here on Tuesday night. Jack Noel said he reckoned some of the boards were still finishing their dinner <laughs> with the chopsticks. <laughs> no comment on that. Was <laughs> it greeted well, Eddie? Uh, yeah, it was a good change up. Uh, we had a Kyoto kitchen, I think, down in Winchester. So if you're down the south coast, you should go and visit it. Uh, they, they put on a good spread for us. I think the boys enjoyed the, the difference. Uh, at the team meeting, everyone got a set of chopsticks. Uh, I don't think too many of them used it. <laughs> Joe, 
many people stabbing you. Uh, isn't there with chopsticks? No, 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 no. That's a no, no in Japanese culture. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant, thank you. Eddie, how important is it to have that wider concept within the squad of, of doing a little bit of that kind of cultural work and, and just mixing things up a little bit by doing some of those preparations this week? Uh, well, I think as we said, you know, th from 12 months ago, uh, we're preparing for the World Cup, so we, we're trying to do little bits and pieces to get us to be best prepared. Obviously, our attention this week is on Japan, but to have a little bit of uh, awareness of what it's going to be like in Japan is important. And on that broader concept as well, obviously there was the late arrival back deliberately from Portugal into South Africa, the consigned training week this week. How much and how well do you think it's hopefully working with what might lay ahead next year? Uh, well, we get feedback all the time from the games. The game gives us feedback on how we're training, how we're preparing, and the, the feedback at the moment is pretty good. In terms of what Jamie Jones has done with Japan, the team you clearly know extremely well. They've had some pretty decent results in recent months, haven't they? Yeah, no, they've done well. They're a good team. You know, they play very much in the Highlanders style now. They're a big kicking team. You know, they beat Italy. They kick the ball 45 times. So that's once every minute. Um, so, you know, our backfield's going to get plenty of work. And it means that it's going to be a higher transition game than a, than a set-piece game. And... Yeah, that brings challenges in itself. Let's pick up one other change in Alex Ozowski, just because he's had such a frustrating couple of weeks with his ban and then kind of extended to various reasons. How hungry is he now? Now he's got his chance. Well, he's no hungrier than any other player. They're, you know, all the players are hungry. Um, but again, he's been a guy that's been around the squad for, for two years. You know, he's got versatility. He can play 12, 13, 10, 15. So he gets his opportunity to play outside George. And George, um, Eddie just mentioned there was a <coughs> kicking game that Japan can bring to the table. It's going to be a very interesting tactical match potentially, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, like Eddie said, um, they're probably the, the highest kicking team in the world and want an unstructured nature to the game. So for, for us, it's important to be tactically good this week. Um, we want to play the game on our terms, speed it up at the right times, slow it down at the right times, um, kick the ball at the right times and keep the ball at the right times. So certainly a challenge in terms of that. Um, but like I said, we've prepped well for it. And from your point of view, you've obviously made some key contributions off the bench recently. <coughs> a chance to start. Do you also put pressure? But how's your approach being back in that ten shirt from the start of an England game again? Excited, yeah. Like I said, I think that the weeks have not changed too much for me really, and um, I don't really see the fascination between starters and, and the guys on the bench. We're a squad of 23, and um, probably more so the last two weeks, the times that the lads have come off the bench onto the field has been the most important part of the games um, against South Africa and New Zealand. So, um, yeah, I think from being on there the last two weeks and the engagement from the lads being on there and, and how big their job is when they come on the field is, is huge and it'll be no different this week. Finally, for me, 50 caps. Has it gone by the blink of an eye? I didn't see long ago since I remember going to your house, but it was on the 20s up in Leicester and really come by quickly or not? Um, I don't know. All I'd say is when you get your first cap for England, it's an unbelievable moment. It's an honour and a privilege. and. Uh, to get one is, is special, um, so you never dream of getting 50, so um, yeah, massively excited, it's going to be a proud day, but the most important thing is we step forward as a team and we get back on on winning terms this week. Eddie, just on the team, Ted Hill, that is a meteoric rise, I mean, what have you seen in him that suggests that he's ready? Uh, he's a very calm boy, uh, physically yeah, for a young guy, he's put together well. He reminds me very much of a, like a Reuben Thorne. Big, strong number six, strong around the tackle, good carrier, good tackler. And he's just got all the attributes of, of being a good player, but he's got a lot of work to do. Um, and we've decided to blood him this week. Um, so it's a great opportunity for him. Yeah, what's impressed us a lot, and I'm sure it's impressed the players and, and the coaches, is... For a young guy who's played, what, two premiership games. He's come in, he hasn't been overawed by the situation, just got on with his work, learnt what he's needed to, to do and, and contributed well. For a player like him, I mean, as you say, with so little experience at the moment, is there time for him to make a bit of the World Cup? I know it's step by step, as we walk on the international field, <clears> but 
you know, when you look at the longer pictures, you are this really thinking about the kind of say, is there time for him to put his name in the front? Well, if he didn't think there was, he wouldn't be playing. He'd be back uh, playing for the Warriors again. So they played Bath, don't they? Friday night. So, yes. yes. And you just, I know you've been talking about it earlier in the week, but with your family ties and coaching history, how, how much does this game mean to you personally to play for them? Uh, look, that doesn't come into it. Uh, yeah, you always look back fondly on teams that you've coached and players that you've coached, but you move on. Uh, you don't hang on to those things. Uh, you know, our job on Saturday is to play a, our best 80 minutes in November, and that's the only thing I've been thinking about. Hey, Eddie, um, having watched Japan's latest match last weekend against New Zealand, and um, having seen their defeat by a wide margin, what do you think of the current Japanese squad? Uh, well, New Zealand's done that to a few teams. Uh, Japan's not the only team that's happened to. I think they're progressing really nicely. Yeah, you know, the team's regenerated. There's only probably five or six players left from from the te team that I coached, and they're the you know outstanding players like Leach, uh, Kenki on the wing. You know, those guys are still there, but they've brought some good young players in, and I think Japan's benefiting from playing in Super Rugby. You see those young guys come into the squad now. They're much better prepared for the top level rugby. Uh, and they look like now, which is different previously, they think they can win. You know, previously Japanese sides were happy to get beaten over the brave blossoms, but now this new generation of Japanese players believe that they can win. And that makes them a much stronger side. Extremely well coached by Jamie and, and Tony Brown. Um, they got a good balance between uh, indigenous Japanese and non-indigenous Japanese, if that's the right term. Um, and they got some power where, where they need to have power. And Japan are very much the challengers in the match this weekend. And uh, they're trying to learn as much as they can and they're trying to learn as much as they can and they're trying to learn as much as they can the World Cup next year. What lessons would you like to teach them? Uh, well, there's no lessons out there. We're, we're just trying to play our best 80 minutes of rugby. Yeah, we want to play really well because we don't get too many opportunities to play as an England side. So every opportunity is a golden opportunity. It, it means a lot to the players. It means a lot to the fans. So we want to play really well. And we want to have that ruthless mindset about going out there, playing every minute like it's the last minute of Test Rugby. OK, thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers. Thank <laughs> you.